Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing my series on Orca Slicer. In this video, I'm going to be working on customizing my initial configuration for my printer, and I'll walk you through those steps. So let's go ahead and get started. So my initial step is to verify the advanced settings is on, and then as a second step, I'm going to copy, save this profile because I want this to be my profile. I don't want to change the default profile at all. So I'm just going to name this CR6 standard. And that way, as I change things, I'm just affecting this profile. Now let's take a look at the G code. And I think I mentioned in my last video, one of the things I did not like was this profile did not run a home before my print. So after the G28 command, I'm just going to add a G29, then a semicolon, and type in auto bed level. And that should run an auto bed level before it does the print. Everything else, I'm just going to leave as is. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to save that in the profile I just created. I'm not using multi-material, so I don't need to worry about that. All the other settings here, I'm just going to leave as is. So I have this all set now. Close that. Now on my filament, I want to do the same process here. Because part of my filament, I'm going to want to change the flow settings. And this will be very machine specific. So again, I'm calling this minimal 3DP CR6 PLA. So now I have that. And for right now, the only change I'm going to make is typically on my temperatures, I do. 110 for the first layer. And all other layers, I do a 205 for PLA. And I'm just changing the bed temperature. I use 65 degrees. Now, I may change that once I do the calibration, but for right now, everything here looks correct. My flow ratio is set at 0.98 right now. We'll do some flow tests. Get that changed correctly. Looking through here, everything looks all right. Look at all the other settings. Everything's looking good. So let me head, go ahead and save that. Now I actually have the profile here. And let's change that to. CR6 standard. And then let's look through all these settings. Now, the first setting I change is I'm going to leave the layer height at 0.2. And my first layer height, I always do that at 0.32. For my line widths, I'm going to set everything to 0.5. And again, this is what works for me. I'm going to leave the seams as is. Wipe speeds, I don't need to worry about precision. Leave that as is. And I'm going to enable arc fitting. I'll leave the elephant foot compensation alone. Ironing, I don't want any ironing. I want to leave the wall generation as arachne. And I'm just looking through the rest of these settings. See if anything jumps out at me as needing to be changed. Now let's hit. Save, and then we'll go on to the next screen. Go on strength. Right now, I'm leaving it as three loops. Top shell is four. Top shell thickness is 0.8. Let's look at that. I'm going to change this to one. Pattern bottom up this to four. Infill density is set to 15. Now I'm going to change this to adaptive cubic 
prefer that. And looking down here to all these other settings, those all look good. I'm going to hit save before I go to the next screen. Speed, I'm going to make a couple different changes here. My first layer of speed, I'm going to up this to 20. Initial infill, we'll leave that at 20. Initial travel speed, it's 100%. That's fine. Number of smaller layers, I'm going to do. I'm updating this speed to 35. Now that works a little better for me. I'm going to do 35 for the inner wall as well. Horse infill, I'm going to bump that up to 65. Internal solid, do that at 50. Top surface, 35. Gap infill, 35. And support at 150. Take a look at all the other speeds. I'm going to bump up travel speed to 165. All the other speeds look okay here. Looking through here really quickly. Oops, let me save that before I go to the next. Now my support, I'm going to actually save this twice because I want to set some things up. I want normal as is default. Let's change some settings here. Threshold angle. I'm going to up that to 50. I'm going to leave build plate only. I want to check that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. And then I want to just turn the support off and save it again. Mainly that, that way all my defaults that I wanted are still here. So when I do turn on support, I'm good. Let's go to other dirt loops. I'm going to do array dirt distance. I'm going to put that up to five. I like a little bit away from my sprint dirt speed. Leave that at 50, that's fine. Scroll down here and look at everything else. Everything else looks correct, so I'm going to save this. Now these are all my changes that I make. If you remember in my last video, it took one hour and 51 minutes for the Benchy to print when it sliced plate. And you'll notice now that it takes approximately one hour and 28 minutes. So we've saved basically almost 25 minutes. That, that's good. Now, look at a couple other things here. Right now, my flow rate was 0.98. Okay, so I'm going to go over my filament again. I want to make one change here. Right now, the flow ratio is at 98. Looked up my old profile in Cura, and I had it set to 0.95. I'm going to change that. We pressure advanced disabled for right now. This again. I'm going to make another change. I noticed in my first layer, I have been doing 18. Normal temperatures to 10 on PLI. Let's save that. And here it is. Work. All right, go to other. And now I've made my changes. Let's make one other small big change here. I'm going to go to brim type. I just want to do an outer brim. That way I can keep this banshee from falling over like my tech one did. And that's it, slice plate. Adding the brim, added about a minute. So again, we're looking at about 22 minutes saved from the default profile. I could probably tune this more. So let's go ahead and print this. And then we'll take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to send this over to the printer. So I have the print uploaded. Right? And that's going to go ahead and send it to the printer via Octoprint. And I'll pause and we'll come back a little bit and take a look at that Benchy. So I've completed my second Benchy. As you can see, this one actually finished. Did use Brim. That appeared to work well. Brim. Seems to come off pretty easy. Yeah, that came off pretty easy. We'll look at the text on the bottom. It's just as clear. Maybe there's an issue here in the back. Here's I have the same problem, and this probably has to do with the seam. I think it's a little bit clear. I am noticing some stringing on this one, but it's not quite as bad as the original. So just by doing my small tweaks, I've saved myself over 22 minutes for this Banshee. Now in my next video, I'm going to 
sit down and try all the different calibrations available in Orca Slicer. And then based on those calibrations, we'll do one last bench sheet and see what our quality looks like. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one-hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.